Hi, John. How you doing? Good. I'm Laura. How you doing, Laura? Um, and I'm, I'm glad to be able to talk to you. All right. I've talked to Fred uh, quite a bit, and, and so I just basically want you to kind of tell me about yourself. Why, you? why did you agree to be interviewed? Uh, well, for a number of reasons. Uh, to start out with, uh, I guess, uh, to be interviewed. Uh, well, he's, you know, I don't know if you're on aware that he, Fred's writing a book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For uh, starters, this would probably be a, a good, uh, I guess you could say, a, uh, s something to get uh, the information out there right. about my book. So that would help me out. And then uh, another reason that I'm doing this is because of, uh, I was, uh, when this all first started, I was in the uh, Ohio Penitentiary. Lebanon, when I decided to uh, go ahead and come clean about a lot of things. Okay. Well, I was actually trying to, to make some deals, really. I'd come to a decision in the Ohio prison that I was serving 26 to life there, and I just, I just, I can't conceive that amount of time, you understand? Yeah. And so, I'd, I see no end in sight, so uh, I decided to make my own ending, and um, I, the information that I have and the things that I know and the things that I've been a part of uh, could get me to where I wanted to be probably a lot quicker because I'd rather be, to be honest with you, I'd rather be deceased, dead, than to be to spend my life in prison and watch my family drop off one by one. And when I die in the end of an old man from being in prison, no one left to mourn me when I'm dead. So I chose... So anyway, I went to the, uh, the officials there at the prison that I was at, and I had told them uh, that I wanted to make some confessions, and so they weren't taking me seriously at first because I wasn't giving away enough information. So I decided to give away enough information on one, which is it, it says in the papers that I'd seen uh, here after it was released that the investigators, the state officials here in Missouri, due to their investigating their hard work, that they found me because of DNA, and then I made a full confession, which is not true. Mm -hmm. I contacted officials in the state of uh, in Ohio at the prison, and then they contacted the FBI. The FBI came to me uh, because of the information I gave them on this here. I gave them every detail that they have here on this homicide that I'm at, down to the uh, from the cell phone to the, everything. They didn't have no but where in sight. They, I mean, to be honest with you, I, they probably couldn't have found their bottom side with both hands, to be honest with you. Which murder is this? This which, is which, the Karilichik murder okay. here in Missouri. Right, okay. So uh, anyway, so I gave them everything. and in, But you know what, there was deals that I've, I told them. I'm giving you this. I've let the FBI, I've let everybody know I'm giving you this much information in order to cut deals, but no, so far, no deals have been made. Uh, I've been getting, I've been getting shafted pretty much on every deal. But you know, it's cool because, I mean, I'm a pretty firm guy. If I tell you, give you my word, it's my word, and I'm not pretty much too too much worried about anything else, really. Uh, what is it that you confess to? What 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 is it that you want everyone to know? Um, well, the, this is the, the I have given them enough information. Now you have to understand, I'm not a I'm I'm, I'm not a stupid guy. Mm -hmm. I've, I'm I'm pretty smart in a lot of things, right. but uh, so you know, I know how to give enough information and how not to give enough information. I guess you could call the investigators have something called hold back that they hold back on investigations. Well, I have hold back also, so I keep hold back just enough to where they, they can't solve something, but they know it's true. And um, so anyway, um, what I, I'm sorry, I've just got to rambling. What was your question That's again? That's all right. Just, what is it that you want people to know? Uh, how many people have you killed? I mean, what is it that you want to come clean about? Um, I have several homicides. Uh, that I personally have dealings with, and there's been other people that was involved, but I'll never reveal their names ever because it has nothing to do. This is me. This is my end, my life. I'm writing this story, and uh, um, you know, 
I, be, I, I really I, I can't put a lot of information out there about this because, like I say, the, all the information that I've given, I haven't received uh, anything, no no types on any of the deals. I've just been getting, like I say, I've been getting uh, mishandled, mistreated. I guess you could say the whole this through this whole period of time, and they're not taking me like I need to be uh, seriously. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so, and I'm a very serious type guy. I'm, I mean, I might have some homicides. I might have been used drugs, but I'm also a well-disciplined person, also, and uh, which is uh, something that I, I, uh, you know, I, I, I pride myself on. I guess you could say is me being disciplined. And uh, so, it's fine. They can handle me how they want, but you know, it's up to them. They they can either. Uh, they can either listen to what I say or they can, they can carry on. Well, tell, tell me what it is that you have told them that you want people to listen to. I mean, you want to control your destiny. That's, that's right. That's right. That's a good way. To, I mean, that's what this is all about. That's a good way to say it. So what is it that would, what is it that you have done that would mean that you would die for these crimes? Well, I mean, to be, for starters, I mean, they've got enough now. Uh, I mean, I, I possibly, I'm more than likely, they will receive the death penalty here mm -hmm. for just this, uh, for this homicide. But I've, uh, I've been involved with the organization, uh, affiliated for, this will be 18 years this year. And the, uh, the organization that I'm affiliated with, uh, is that the Simon City Royals? That, that is correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. I see you did your homework. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, I've uh, just, I, I guess when I was a child, I guess you, you, you're missing something. And um, I'm not really sure what it is. I'm still missing something. I've never found it, whatever it is. And, um, but I'm not the type of person that uh, I, don't, I don't take well to other people's laws. I'm not, I don't like to be told what to do. I don't like being programmed. I don't like being pushed around. I feel that people spend their whole lives like that and they're not, they're not really free. So I just, um, I just, you got two types of people. You got people that lead and people that follow. And I just decided I wasn't going to be a follower. And um, I've rose through the ranks, through the Simon City Royals, and uh, you become involved with things and that type of lifestyle and that's I've seen and been a part of things and but you know that's that was my life that's just how it is you know they, there a lot of studies have said if you are a member of an organization it's because you didn't have something in your family life or they take you know a place of maybe not having a father or a mother or something is is that what the organization fulfilled in you? Um, no, I could. I have to disagree with that. A lot of people, it, they do miss that companionship that you receive from a family, but um, I've always had that from my family. Uh, that's the one thing in life. I, I don't really, I don't look at things as other people do. A lot of people, the only thing that I can say is that I love my family, and that's the only thing in life that I really even care about is my family and uh and Miss Tudor, Dana Tudor, if you are aware of who she is, mm -hmm. uh, my daughter, and man, my family. But you know, um, other than that, I just view things as objects, people, animals, the trees, cars. They're just all the same to me. I just, I, I feel that this. Uh, I just feel everything's pretty much is on um, this earth's a waste of time, really. Well, then let me ask you, John. How does it, does it make it easier to kill someone because you, you vision everything, you look at everything other than your family as just one and the same, That's right. basically an object? Right. Does that make it easier? I would have to say it would. For uh, I can't conceive or understand why people, families want to, they seek for um, uh, closure after things like this. I can't, I don't understand that. I don't understand how... You got people that, like in militaries, that kill people, uh, soldiers, and then they have to go through therapy, and because they're, I mean, 
Um, I, I can't understand what it is that people, uh, I can't figure it out. Why, why they feel bad. Why they feel that way. It doesn't, doesn't happen with me. You don't feel bad about telling uh, anyone? Not personally, that I've personally done myself, no. Why? Did these people deserve this? I would say some did, yes. Uh, there's probably been a few, a couple that, uh, I guess they was wrong place, wrong time. Which would be uh, the, this last one? That would definitely be wrong place, wrong time. What happened? What made you, what made you choose him? What was the, the situation leading up to, to I was I was losing, uh, I guess you could say, uh, control in the vehicle that I was in. Uh, so I had, uh, that was a way for me to, I guess you, um, to gain control again. Uh, control of yourself or control of... That would be everybody that was in the vehicle. Okay. Um, they was, uh, everybody was, you know, they'd already known, a lot of the, the people in there know me, and they may have none uh, personally seen things that I've done, but they know. Mm -hmm. You mean business. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I I told everybody before they left, I said, hey, <laughs> You're right, you're getting this vehicle, it's going to be a long ride. And um, so anyway, things were getting bad in the vehicle. And so I, in my head, and you got to understand that I was, I was also, I used drugs. I have, I have racing thoughts. It's been that way since I was a kid. I can't, uh, I'm constantly, it doesn't matter if I'm sleeping, I'm, if I'm awake, I'm, I'm constantly thinking of a hundred things at one time. And, and uh, they've tried giving me medications for this, but I, I don't take medications because it's not like that. Because <laughs> right. they change you. Anyway, so I, I guess I was a pro, I took a lot of drugs to um, calm myself down, to make me think other things because I, I just, I don't, I, I don't think like other people do. And which I don't think it's bad. And you know, I just, like I say, I learn also at an exceptional rate of speed. So I, I don't know. I think that's got something to do with yeah, it I also. That. But then, um, anyway, I was I was dr on drugs to say the least. Anyway, to get what I'm saying is, and uh, so I was just you know I probably wasn't thinking too clearly, and and that was the first thing I could come up with. And so we pulled into I pulled into this rest area, and that was a way for me to gain control to to show I don't know I guess I would assert my dominance I guess you could say mm -hmm. that'd be the way to put it. Mm -hmm. And it shut everybody up for a while, and then uh, you know they uh, they went to bickering and and, and uh, arguing again, which would be uh, the couple that was with us and my uh, my my girlfriend Dana. They was arguing, and uh, so they wanted out. The ones in the back did. They wanted out. After this, they said this a couple hours later. Well, why don't you just pull in the next town and let us out? Now, this was after the murder. This is after, yes. Well, back up just a little bit because I want to be clear about you're in the car. Everybody's kind of bugging you, and you want to gain control. And so you pull into the truck stop. That's right. And what goes on from there? Well, um, I... I, pref I really don't want to say a lot about that because, you know, these, some of these people still may have to go to court yet, mm -hmm. and I don't want to mess any of their cases up. So, I mean, what I will say is that um, I'll say this is anybody that deals with me on the street and anybody that knows me has ever come across my path, anybody that's known me even from a child growing up, that you do what I say or or I don't need you. I don't need have you know it's been that way in, in my own family's houses you know it's I I take control when I'm there and I don't understand I mean I do understand it's just in my blood to be I mean I don't know it's just how I am and so it's either my way or no way mm -hmm. and they knew this I guess the I guess I put fear into people's and I'm not really that fearful of of a person but uh, if you probably, if you knew a little more about me, it probably changed your thoughts. But anyway, uh, so they, um, 
I just felt like I was losing that fear anyway and uh, with them that they felt toward me. And so, uh, uh, so they, I made them do, you know, the things that participate in, without, I wouldn't even call it participation, but they did what they did out of fear. That's the only thing I can say. And they, anyway, they, like I said later, they wanted out, but I told them that nobody was getting out of that truck period without without a bullet in their head and but do you take full responsibility I take full responsibility so as for the other people in the car including your girlfriend as far as you're concerned they should just be set free they should be yes and there's no reason for me to I don't really even like the I don't really even like the, the, the guy, the other guy that was in there but yeah he was he should be set free I don't really I didn't like him or or his, his girlfriend, but they were, I needed them for something, and they were with us. I never, I didn't really care for them too much anyway, but they shouldn't be uh, anywhere involved in this, no. Yeah. Can you explain to me just the, what it, what it does to you when someone has died at your hands, I mean, does it make you feel like you have more control then, or are you calmer, or do you feel like you're more organized then? It hasn't. Uh, I, I look at people that do things like that when they feel they're gaining something. Mm -hmm. I don't feel that that's. Uh, I think those people are crazy. <laughs> but yeah. I feel nothing. It's. Uh, I don't gain anything. I mean, or you gain something anytime somebody's. Uh, is killed that somebody's gaining something from it there's even I mean it doesn't matter what it is somebody's gaining something from it but no I feel no uh, psychological uh, feelings you know uh, I don't I don't get off on things like that I don't even think about it really it's uh, I have another something else in mind another goal but no I don't feel like I'm powerful or or um anything like that. No. So why do it? Well, because there's, uh, I don't know how to say it, and I, I guess, um, I guess, I don't know if you're familiar uh, with them, if you've ever seen the movie Troy, where Achilles of the uh, Myrmidons tells uh, Prince Hector of the Trojans that there's no pact between lion and men, is that I'm a lion, and I see everybody else is men. <laughs> And you kind of had that philosophy your whole life. That's since I was a child, yes. When you were a child, tell me the things that you would do that make you believe that you have always been someone who wants control and the way you view uh, life. Well, I, um, I grew up, you know, pretty much uh, in the country my whole life as a in key child. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, I didn't, uh, neighbors were far away or, so I, I chose to spend a lot of time alone anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I just, like, like I said, when I was a child, I had these racing thoughts even then. And I didn't, um, I didn't really know, I didn't really know what it was. And, uh, you know, I, I knew I was different. I did things and I didn't know why I did things. And, and I never had to have anybody show me how to do things. Uh, it's bad things, good things, anything. I just, I just knew. And I've, I've, over the years, even as a child, I, I had a, I've always had a gift of being able to read people. Mm -hmm. it, not just people, it's situations. Um, I guess uh, st strategies. I guess you could say. Uh, I can strategize any situation. I can be around a man now and within 60 seconds, and I can tell you exactly what kind of person he is. Um, I just I, I I don't know but I was when I was a child I could see these things and and I I really uh I really don't, I kind of don't want to know what it is mm -hmm. but anyway um, more I guess than an intuition but. I guess you could say something like that anyway I spent a lot of time alone in the woods um, I used to play a game and I was uh, I was in a, I played like I was an assassin that was my that was my main game. I played as an, I was always an assassin. It didn't matter what we was playing. Or sometimes I played, uh, 
cops and robbers, but I was always the robber. I always wanted to be the robber, and I always uh, wanted to be the uh, cowboys and Indians. I wanted to be the, the the Indians, or I just I didn't I didn't ever see the other side as any fun, and I uh, I I hurt animals when I was a child. Uh, I'm not going to go off into a lot of details, but... Uh, and you know that they say that that's like a textbook characteristic. I, I understand that. That's but what that, they say. But that you agree with, I would think. Well, yeah, I've, met, I've actually met and talked to a lot of people, a lot of guys that hurt animals growing mm -hmm. up. I mean, you'd be surprised that really, because I mean, because I'd, I'd understand that they say that people killed animals, but hurt animals, but I've talked to a number of people that, oh yeah, I used to do this to our animals, and uh, so... I know that it's not just me. People just don't. Anyway, but I did, and uh, I used to, and I hate to say it, I used to, I was pretty rough with my, my brothers and sisters also. I was, uh, I, I was pretty mean to them as far as, you know, physical abuse goes. What um, would you do to them? Um, I mean, I would, I would, uh, I don't know. I'd take the games that I played a little too far. I just put it that way. And, and uh, you know, I, I don't really, I can't explain what it was. And I've apologized to them for it over the years. And, you know, like I say, I have a family, just like them other people had a family. But, you know, like I say, the only thing that I covet in this world period is my family. And other than that, I just really don't, I, I don't really care too much for life, period, really. I just, I don't know what it is. What, when you die, where do you think you'll go? Do you think death will be better? Um, I personally feel that, uh, that personally, that um, if there is a God, if, if there is a devil, I personally don't care either way because I refuse to worship anything that I can't, that's not, you know, tangible or made herself known to me, or I feel like it's a conspiracy, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I, so I'll never bow down to anything or anybody because it's not in my blood. And if there is a God or a devil, if I, go, if I get sent to the whatever you, uh, hell, if I get sent there, I'll spend my whole life trying to, eternity, trying to take over hell because I'll bow down to no person. No entity, no being, no God of this world, no God of any other world or any other universe, ever. So you are the center of the universe? To me, yes. Mm -hmm. Now you said you can assess people, um, and I believe that. And we've been talking for a little bit, so how, how do you assess me? You? Mm -hmm. Well, I figure you probably to be uh, just off really talking but you know I really haven't uh, right now we're just kind of uh, I guess you could say we're, we're just doing this interview right now mm -hmm. so I really haven't asked you any questions so right. I wouldn't know I can just off offhand I would say that you probably spent uh, in high school I'd say when you graduated and went to college you spent a lot of years work you probably knew you wanted to be where you're at a long time ago but you're not where you want to be uh, you probably want to be at the top somewhere you would like to be somewhere better into a company where you're at but you're not there yet uh, as a matter of fact you probably didn't even see yourself in this position you probably wanted to be something more than what you are right now uh, even to w the way your career is going, but you're not there yet, and um, but you're still striving to be. Yeah. I mean, I pretty much, I can, I know things. Mm -hmm. When you, if, if, when you are at a, you know, the truck stop or, or in a situation, and you said that you can um, immediately have a grasp of the environment. Right. How do you pinpoint who it is that you that you're going to go after? How does that happen? Like, how did you how did you pinpoint I don't, the trucker? I don't pinpoint. I just it doesn't. I don't look at an individual as being weak because I see everybody as weak. Right. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if uh, if a guy standing here, three hundred and fifty pounds, solid rock, six 
seven, six, eight, or if there's a guy standing here that's five foot two and weighs 120 pounds, I see them as the same. They're not, I don't, like I say, I go through situations. Uh, you have to, in the, you have to look at a situation and always go to the end of it and see the end of it before it happens. You have to, and then you have to have the alternate routes in case the, the, uh, the main root of your plan is, is, uh, chopped off. You have to have other ways around it. And I have to see all of these things in any situation. It's, it's actually, uh, one of the laws in the 48 laws of power, actually. Uh, I'm not sure which number it is, but, to see the end, and that's what I, I just, I see the end of things, and it doesn't matter, like I say, it doesn't matter, I don't pick somebody out, Okay. they pick themselves. So explain that in, in more detail to me, they pick themselves, so they put themselves in a vulnerable Well, it's situation. just whatever situation it is, that's right, I mean, if I was somebody else, and I, if I knew me, and the person I was, there's no way I'd want to cross me, period. If I was, it doesn't matter who I was, what situation I was in, because there's never any situation that I'm in that I don't feel that I'm not in control, mm -hmm. ever. I feel that I'm where I'm at because that's just where I'm at. There's never any situation where I'm not in control. Shackled down, chained up, it doesn't matter. I feel I'm in control. Do so you feel in control right now? I'm here because I want to be. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so. So what, what is it that you want to happen next? I know that you, you, know, you basically want to control your destiny and you want people to listen. And what, where, where do you go next? I mean, what, what happens? Um, well, as, like I say, I've, I've, I've had some investigators already from Mississippi come up here and been talking with them. From some murders in Mississippi? That's correct. Mm -hmm. And then I've had... Um, I've had, um, but like I say, I'm not, I'm not moving further with anything until I, uh, until I get start getting things. That, and they they can search till they want to, and I'm never gonna say anything else about it. I mean, they've got a lot of information now, but I'm not gonna solve anything that for these investigators or these other people until I start getting the things that I wanted. And if I don't get the things that I wanted, then. That's fine, but I'm still see the end for me. It's it'll be soon. It'll be within it'll be within my family's lifetime, mm -hmm. and which is okay with me. Because what you want is to die. That's correct. That's the only thing worthy of a warrior, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Death. It happens to everybody. I'm not. I don't fear being dying. The only thing I that I even worry about is the emotions that my family might feel. Right. But other than that, I'm good. Do you have any, any ounce of regret for anything that you've done? Yes. Um, the, for bringing something beautiful into a, a world that's killing everything anyway. It's dying, won't be here long anyway. I have a daughter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not upset that she's born. I mean, I love her, but what I, I'm upset that she's, I just wasn't thinking and brought her into a world that's, that's uh, people are killing themselves anyway. And so I just kind of, that's how I regret that. But I mean, I don't regret her. I regret my, my, my thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I guess you could probably say I regret uh, maybe not being the person that my, you know, my, my family should probably think I should be. I don't regret the person that I am because you are who you are. And I can't help the way I think. I don't know why it is that I am. I've questioned myself for that. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I am the way I am. I don't know why I think the way I do. Uh, it's, it just is. It is what it is. If you were to be released, <clears throat> you're back out into society, and would you think that it would be uh, no. you know what? I wouldn't advise anyone to, I mean, not unless <laughs> not they want to lie and loose in the streets. 
Because you'd kill again. More than positive. I just don't take well to, I don't like people crossing me. I don't like, I, I feel that insubordination is punishable by death. I mean, I just, I, I just, I got crazy. I got different thoughts. I just don't, um, I wouldn't let me go. What are your thoughts? What is it that, that goes through your mind again and again and again? everything at once uh, you know I used to just think that you know I, I think of situations uh, you know it's constantly things are going through my head uh, now I, 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 I think about other things uh, it's creation I think of uh, how things were created what people what people are what what purposes are what makes people think the way they I have so many thoughts that run mm -hmm. I, you know uh, I, I call them, uh, I, I don't know what it is, uh, I just, I, I'd call them thoughts of uh, supreme being, I don't know, I, I just have things that, I think about the universe, the universes, how we're here, how we possibly could be here, I just, I've, I've thought like this for a long time in my mm -hmm. life, I just, I don't, I don't think like normal people. Never have. And so you think you were probably born wired this way, with I, the racing thoughts and the. Well, I'd say this is that I know that there's. I was born this way, yes, and everybody's not born. I guess you could say with the, uh, with the spirit of God in them, as they would say. Is that's why I have this Bible verse on my eye. If you see it, is. It states in that in that verse that, and I didn't get it because I I feel, I mean I have that I'm the antichrist, per se, but uh, it, that that it states in this verse it says, and everyone that does not confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is the spirit of the antichrist which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. If you notice, he says, this is the spirit. Mm -hmm. So that means that there's other things that are born without the spirit of God in them. A lot of people don't take that and see that. So if you're not born with the spirit of God, if you're born with the spirit of something else, then you're born, people, it's, then according to the Christian Bible, then you're not, everybody can't have the spirit of God in them. So you don't have the Spirit of God? I de not according to the Bible. If you're going by the, that route, then no, I definitely do not. But what about you? What do you think? I feel that I'm in charge of my own destiny. And if I don't, if there's a God, then I'm definitely not going that way. Uh, if that's the way the Bible teaches. And if I'm going the other way, I'm going to, I'll we'll spend eternity, like I say, trying to take over run that, run something, and if that's, I personally feel, though, that we're in charge of our own destinies, and we're each capable of being our own gods. It just depends on how strong you are and, and your mental capacity, if, if you're able to conceive the, uh, of, uh, the thoughts of the universe. Right. You have a two-year business degree? Yes, I do. Now, why'd you get that? Why? Mm -hmm. uh, the girls. In college. school, yeah, I just women. I just it was it was a way to meet g more girls. I t I went on an academic scholarship, um, but I just went for the women, really. So you like women a lot? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's an understatement. But, <laughs> I mean, yeah. How many people, men and women? Um, have you killed? I have never killed a woman. Okay. And I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm not at liberty to say right now, but it's been, as far as the murders that I've been a part of, but there's been quite a few. A dozen? At least. 20? Under. Somewhere around the 15? Somewhere around in there. Do you remember each one? Uh, like I say, I've been involved. There's been other people involved, but 
you know, uh, I guess guilty by association, uh, things like that. But yeah, I remember every person. Do you, do you remember their face right before they died? I mean, I, their expression. The ones that I've seen, their face, yes. I what, mean, do you, what do you see in their face right before they die? Usually fear. I mean, that's usually all any, if somebody sees death coming, then it's, that's usually fair, yeah. And uh, that's all I mean. If if I seen death coming, I don't know if uh, I don't know how I'd handle it. I mean, even though I I'm ready for it, but there's no telling. And and you say you really don't feel anything when you see that that last expression on someone's face, which is fear, and that doesn't elicit any kind of emotion in you. No. Just walk away and go on to the next scenario. Down to business. So it is like a business. I guess you could say you uh, these gentlemen here wouldn't be standing here. Uh, this jail wouldn't be here. Lawyers, uh, judges, people in government, they wouldn't be here if there wasn't people like me. Now that brings me to another question. So you are representing yourself. Um, so far, but I, I did fill out papers the other day to see a, uh, an attorney, but uh, that's only because I'm, I'm, I was actually, I'm, I'm a little upset because things, uh, I've, I don't know how a nice way to put it. I've been, they keep get wanting, hey, we just want this information, but we can't do this for you. I'm just giving you what I'm hearing. This is what I'm hearing. But uh, we just want some information. We're gonna, we can't give you this or we can't do That's up to some of the powers that be, but we just want some information. Uh, yeah, but that hasn't got nothing to do with us, but we just want some information. And I'm not at, at liberty to give any more information right. until, uh, until you... You know, I'm not asking for a, an, a miracle. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I already, I'm, I'm agreeing. I'm ready to go. I'm ready for death. But anyway, I got this lawyer for, a, just in case, uh, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know what was going on. I haven't heard from Seal over. Uh, I haven't, I didn't know if any media was coming. You know, if I was media, I'd, I'd be all over this because things like this don't happen. No, they often. don't happen, and they're very interesting. I mean, I don't think there are a lot of people like you. There's not. So, yes, it is. And so, anyway, so things just haven't been going quite my way. So I filled out last week some paperwork. Just, but, I mean, the lawyer's either going to, I mean, I'm going to be honest with them. You either this my way or the highway. So why even have a lawyer? I don't. I, I need him for uh, different things. I need. I just. I need them for other things. Yeah. Basically, so, to, to cut some deals and get some things going. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to help someone out. That's one of the deals. That's one of the deals. I'm trying to help someone out, and I needed. And I needed the lawyer. For that. I don't know. <laughs> And I, I needed the lawyer for that. Okay. So, uh, because apparently they're not listening to me. And so, you know, it's, that's, like I say, they don't have to listen to me. I've already got what I want out of this, I guess you could say. Not, not what I wanted, but in the end, I'm still going to the same place. Mm -hmm. So they can, they can handle it how they want to. You know you're going to the to the same place. The destiny is is determined. What what would you say to your your daughter? What what would you want your daughter to remember of you? Um. Well, you know she's had my my daughter's grown up to she's she's been a she's seen her mother and me do a lot of. A lot, 
been involved with a lot of things. And she, um, I regret that. But, you know, I, I've been writing a lot. I sent a lot of literature, have home to my, to my family to hold for my daughter. And, and I just, I let her know that, you know, just because this is how I am, this is the way I am, she knows. I love her and that uh, she needs to figure things out for herself. You know, I can't, that's all I can say about anybody in this world is that you have to just take the information that's available to you, which is endless, and make your own assessments from there. Everybody is in charge of their own, and I don't knock another man or, or woman for living by what they think is right, but um, I feel that people that go by anybody else, they're wrong. They're going to spend their whole life up under somebody else, and they're going to be they're being sheltered, they're not, they're blind, they're not being able to see what the spirit of living really is. All right. Thank you, John.